Doppler ultrasound can be performed in a number of different ways. There's continuous wave Doppler, pulsed wave Doppler, and color Doppler modalities. For continuous wave Doppler, there's two transducer crystals. So one is constantly transmitting while the other one is constantly receiving. With continuous wave, there's no damping. It has a narrow bandwidth and a high Q. And because of that, it has the advantage of higher sensitivity and detecting small Doppler shifts as well as measuring very high velocities. However, the echoes are arising from the entire length of the beams that are overlapped. And so because of this, there's range ambiguity. With pulsed wave Doppler, it works on one transducer crystal. And so it alternates between sending and receiving. And the echoes arise only from the area of interrogation or the sample volume or sample gate. And because of this, there's range resolution or range specificity, and it eliminates that range ambiguity artifact. However, it does display a lower spectrum of velocities. And so aliasing can be an artifact that can occur with pulse wave Doppler. So when we compare pulse wave Doppler to continuous wave Doppler, we can see that pulse wave alternates that transmitting and listening time, whereas continuous wave transmits and listens continuously and simultaneously. And so this fundamental difference leads to those different artifacts that are associated with each Doppler modality, including range ambiguity specific to continuous wave Doppler, whereas there's aliasing specific to pulse wave Doppler. The spectral display refers to the Doppler frequencies that are displayed as a spectrum. And so that spectrum is displayed as a waveform with velocity information versus time. And so those frequency shifts that are displayed are determined by all the factors associated with the Doppler equation. And higher velocities produce higher frequency shifts. Now the amplitude or the strength of those echoes that are displayed in the waveform are determined by parameters that affect power. So the type and the amount of the reflection and the attenuation of that sound beam will affect the strength of the displayed echo in the Doppler waveform. A spectral window is the region where there's no signal. Now, the presence of a spectral window indicates the presence of laminar flow, which is simply the normal state of flow, where the flow streamlines are parallel and aligned and moving in layers and in one direction. We'll talk more about laminar flow in different flow states when we talk about hemodynamics. And so with the loss of that spectral window, we call that spectral broadening. That may or may not indicate the presence of turbulence or stenosis. In order to have that spectral display or color display, the ultrasound system must perform spectral analysis. And so the echo that returns from a moving blood cell is a complex signal and it has many Doppler shifted frequencies. And so because of this, the spectral analysis is performed to extract the individual component frequencies from that complex signal. And so in order to do that extraction, the system uses two different methods depending on the modality of Doppler. For spectral Doppler, it uses fast Fourier transform. For color flow Doppler, it uses autocorrelation. Now autocorrelation with color Doppler is used because of the vast amount of Doppler information that's required to process those signals. And it's little less accurate than spectral Doppler and fast Fourier transform. However, it's much faster than the fast Fourier transform as well. The spectral waveform display is something that may or may not be available depending on what type of system you're utilizing. Now there are some small handheld Doppler systems that may not display spectral data at all. That Doppler data is presented in an audio format only. However, the spectral waveform display gives us very valuable information regarding the frequency shifts. And so it's helpful in diagnostic ultrasound. 
with the spectral waveform display, we're able to see and actually visualize the baseline, the scale and PRF settings, as well as the time and the velocity information. And so we're able to see the positive frequency shift that is positioned above the baseline, as well as negative frequency shifts positioned below the baseline. And then the baseline and scale settings can be altered in order to optimize that waveform display. However, keep in mind that there is an invert control that's available, and sometimes this might be utilized to display arterial waveforms above the baseline and venous waveforms below the baseline. That does not necessarily mean that it is a positive or negative frequency shift. So you have to make sure that all factors are considered with regard to the display and whether or not the invert option or control has been applied. One function that the Doppler system utilizes to clean up the Doppler signal and the spectral display is a wall filter. And so with the Doppler signals that are returning, there's a large dynamic range. And sometimes that can include low level amplitude clutter signals. And so with that, a wall filter can be applied, which will reduce signals based on their frequency shift. And so oftentimes at the baseline, you'll see a very small band where there are no echoes around the baseline. And this is where there's signals that have been attenuated by the wall filter. So the wall filter reduces that wall thump from those low level echoes that don't really come from true frequency shifts of blood cells. Rather, they're coming from low frequency shifts associated with tissue and other artifactual motion. And so the wall filters act as high pass filters, which means that the filters pass the signals with frequency shifts that are higher than the wall filter, whereas they diminish or attenuate any signals with frequency shifts that are below the wall filter frequency. Spectral broadening, as mentioned before, causes overestimation of the peak velocity, and it fills in that spectral window. So a normal spectral window is seen with laminar flow. However, when you have that spectral broadening and that spectral window is filled in, then this may be due to vessel disease or stenosis, but it can also occur artifactually with large array transducers and linear arrays, as well as with large insonation angles, especially as that angle gets to be greater than 60 degrees, and also excessive Doppler gain can cause a filling of that spectral window. The other thing that might cause it is erroneous or superficial sample gate placement. As you can see in this image with the spectral broadening, that sample volume or sample gate was placed closer to the vessel wall elevationally. And because parabolic and laminar flow, which we'll discuss further in hemodynamics, is bullet shaped, the velocity of that flow is highest in the center of the vessel lumen and smallest at the vessel wall. So misplacing the sample gate can cause spectral broadening because of the hemodynamics within the vessel, and therefore it caused spectral broadening to occur. So the sonographer must be aware of their imaging techniques and whether or not they're causing spectral broadening to occur artifactually. Doppler gain is a function of post-processing amplification, where it amplifies those return echoes without increasing the output power and it functions to help increase the visibility of that Doppler waveform. However, again, as mentioned before, having too much gain will actually cause overestimation of that Doppler signal, and it might even cause a degree of spectral broadening to occur.